What's up, guys? Matt here again. What is going on with Hillsong? Well, we're going to dive into the latest uh, news that just came out. You know, I'm not here to gossip. I'm not here to put anyone down. I'm not saying, hey, I'm better than you. But, you know, this just came hot off the press. And I think we can learn from this. So I want to bring it up and address it so we can just go forward with this. Because a whole bunch of stuff is happening with Hillsong right now. And it's just, it's a little bit overwhelming. So with that said, this article today is about the co-founder, Brian Houston. Two accusations have come up against him. It's been addressed to the church. The church members know about it. And, um... You know, going forward from here, what do they do? I don't know what Hillsong should do. You know, there's so much stuff. Um, you know, Carl Lentz, there's documentaries coming up. There's a lot of stuff, controversy with Hillsong going on. And this article does not help. It's the same nature, unfortunately. It's in, it's, um, it comes down to the topic of faithfulness and just, you know, was this appropriate actions by a pastor? So, you know, we're just going to read, we're going to go in with this and, uh, you know, let's just see. We'll talk about it. So I'm reading this from my phone. I'll pop it up on the screen. So it starts off like this. The board of directors of Hillsong, the global megachurch music empire founded by Australian pastor Brian Houston, released a statement Friday, March 18th, addressing two complaints about Houston, including an accusation that the married pastor had spent time alone in a hotel room with a woman in 2019. In the statement, which came as the story was breaking, the Australian press said the Hillsong pastor has been made, has been dealing with two complaints made against Pastor Brian over the last 10 years and each was investigated by a board member or body appointed by the global board and was dealt with confidentially. The other complaint related to an accusation that Houston had flirted with a staff member over a text message a decade ago. Prior to the statement being released, Hillsong reportedly held a video staff meeting with 800 Hillsong staffers around the world in which interim pastor Phil Dooley, who is leading the church while Houston is on leave due to ongoing legal troubles, discussed the complaints for the first time with the church at large. Dooley explained the text. Uh, Dooley explained the text as being to the effect of, if I was with you, I'd like to kiss and cuddle you, and words of that nature. The second incident, as reportedly detailed in staff meeting, took place during Hillsong's annual conference in Kudos Bank Arena in Homebush, New South Wales in 2019. According to ABC, Dooley said Houston had been drinking with a group. Later in that evening, Pastor Brian attempted to get into his room, but didn't have his room key, and ended up knocking on the door to the woman beside him. And she opened the door and he went in with her. The truth is, we don't know what happened. Uh, the woman has said there's no sexual activity. Brian has said there's no sexual activity. But he was in the room for 40 minutes. The Hillsong board statement said that Houston had become disoriented after taking more than the prescribed dose of anti-anxiety prescription mixed with alcohol. This resulted in him knocking on the door of a hotel room that was not his, entering this room and spending time with the female occupant. The board's uh, statement said Houston was also under the influence of sleeping medication upon which he had developed a dependence at the same time. The text messages, at the same time he sent those text messages. The text messages ultimately led to the staff member resigning according to the statement. Okay, so let's just stop there. That's a lot of stuff going on. Whoa. Whoa. What is going on? So it says here. And like I said, I'm not here coming down on this guy. I'm not here. I'm not going to stand up and throw the stones at these people. Uh, accusations come up. They've addressed it. They're dealing with it. They know more than I do. I'm just getting it through the grapevine and I'm just relaying it to you guys. But it looks like here that there's a serious issue with faithfulness going on. Um, so the first accusation that came up was more than a decade ago when he texted a woman and said, you know, if I was with you, I would cuddle and kiss you or something like that. Um... And what they said here, the excuse was that he was under the influence. He was uh, heavily dependent on sleeping medication. And, you know, maybe that's why he did it. I don't know if that is a valid reason or that's, that's just something they're throwing into the news to say, hey, this is why this happened. It, either way, it's unacceptable. As a pastor, uh, there's no making mistakes here. There's no, this isn't a mistake. This isn't, ooh, I messed up and I did something wrong. This is, why would you do that? You have a you have a wife you're leading people you have lots of responsibility all eyes are on you why would you text another woman and said hey if i could be with you i'd kiss and cuddle you like i said i don't know all the details of this i'm pretty sure it wasn't his grandma or his mom or anything like that it was another woman in the church so uh it's just inappropriate it was dealt with she left we never heard about it until now um you know it it is what it is. It's unfortunate. It breaks my heart to hear that, 
you do something so blatant like that, but hey, we're all works in progress here. I'm not, I'm not making excuses for him, but at the same time, it's just like, you know, we all got issues. We all got issues. And this just goes to show that even pastors have issues. Even pastors have struggles. And, uh, you know, that's why we shouldn't put them on this pedestal to, like, there's this amazing, sinless human beings. They need accountability. They need our prayers. They also need to get their act together, too. But the second one, this is the one uh, is more recent. 2019, it says that he was at a Hillsong conference. And after he was on, he took too much anti-anxiety medication and he also had some alcohol and he couldn't get into his own room. So he went into the room and he stayed in the room with the woman for 40 minutes. I have a hard time understanding this because it seems like he's a huge lack of accountability around him. Um, you know, if you're taking anti-anxiety medication, I don't know what it does to you, but if it makes you drowsy, if it impairs your judgment, whatever it does, you should be alert. You should know that. That's that's number one. Say, hey, when I'm on this medicine, I need to be extra careful. I need to be extra careful what I ingest, what I drink, what I consume, where I go. If this affects me in a certain way, I just need to be, you know, alert. I need to be careful. I need to be above reproach. But then you're at a then you're at a conference and you know, with Christian people doing Christian things, talking about church and stuff and Jesus, and then you're gonna go out and have drinks after. I've never heard that happening. I don't understand. I don't really understand that aspect where, you know, you're having this whole Christian thing and then after let's go out for drinks. We know what alcohol does. It impairs your judgment. And as a pastor, you need to be sharp and you need to have your judgment there all the time. I'm not saying you can't have alcohol. I'm just saying you got to be wise about when you do, if you do. That's a whole other discussion right there. But if you know you're taking medication, you shouldn't be drinking alcohol. That's just a number one. You don't take any alcohol when you have medication. It's just a safety factor, but also it impairs your judgment. And, you know, and where was his wife? Where was his accountability? Where was his team? You know, Billy Graham or someone I know, uh, uh, someone I've heard of in the past is uh, anytime they went to a hotel, they would have someone else walk in first. I don't know if it's Billy Graham, but it's some. But they have someone else walk in first, just to check the room out, and and just to make sure no one was in there, no woman was hiding, no one could snap a picture of Billy Graham or whoever it was in this you know awkward scenario, and then throw it out to the press. And uh, you know that might sound overbearing, that might sound too much, but but the reason why they're doing it is because they're trying to be above reproach. They don't want they don't want they don't want to be in the image of evil. They don't want nothing to be used against them in a negative light because they were that careful of how they interacted with women or how they interacted with the opposite sex or how they interacted with anything because they didn't want to have that image because they're that above approach and being wise and cautious about how to go about their lives and how they they, they should be ordering their lives and and be an example for us christians so i don't know man it's it's, it's a hard pill to swallow knowing that he did this it's disappointing i'm not going to sit here and say i'm better than him and shame on you and you know um it's unfortunate, you know, it's unfortunate that this has happened because, you know, we got the Carl Lentz thing that happened. And if you've heard quietly in the news, uh, Brian Houston's dad was also accused of, you know, some some stuff involving, you know, some some something. I, I don't know what it was, but a sexual something of nature. And it was covered up and Brian Houston technically uh, was supposedly knew about it. And that's why he's actually off the Hillsong board right now, because he is doing with he's he's battling those legal troubles because he knew about something and covered it up but then we have this you know and i think it's 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 sad because unfortunately hillsong is like the image of christianity to the world uh, i'm not proud to say that but i'm saying hey everyone knows hillsong everyone you know more non-christians know what hillsong is than some other random stuff everyone knows about hillsong and it's a very public thing. And when something happens with Hillsong, it gets labeled as a whole Christian issue. And, you know, all this stuff is just giving Christianity a bad name right now. And and I think it's safe to say that Pastor Houston, Brian Houston, you know, unfortunately, I think that your days of being a pastor are probably coming to an end. And I don't say that in a bad way or trying to uh, be mean. I'm just saying, hey, you know, this, all these accusations lining up um, you know, with your dad, those things and then this sexual things are lining up it's just like hey i don't think that hillsong is going to be bringing him back they need a whole new image change they need a change in how this church is run they need a change in accountability of the pastors you know this could be a good thing this could be a good thing for everybody it could be a good thing for for brian houston you know he's being he's being um, pruned he's being 
adjusted. He's being refined. You know, he's being corrected. He's going to, he hopefully he repents of his sin. But also, you know, this could be a good thing for Hillsong. You know, for the longest time, Hillsong has been damaged. The reputation has been hit left, right, and center. It's never ending. You know, maybe this is a good thing for Hillsong and these mega churches to, to just to wake up and say, hey, okay, this, we got to have more accountability. We got to do things differently here. So, with that said, you know, let's just trust God with what he's doing. Sin always comes to light. Whether he's guilty or not guilty, sin always comes to light. And secret sin, you can't hide from it. It's always going to come up. Your mess is going to be found out. And the only thing we can do is pray for Pastor Brian. Pray for the Hillsong Church. Pray for the people in the church. I said this in my last video, you know. It's like, it's a, it's sad because these, there's people that go to this church. We're just watching this on TV, hearing about this in the news. But there's people who go to this church and that that, that are part of this and who are hurt by this. And, you know, it's... It, the devil's going to use us to throw people off the path and say, hey, I'm out of here. You know, I can't stand this pastor. I can't stand what happened. And you know what? It's not about the pastor. It's not about what the pastor did. It's, um, you know, we should never run away from the church because of what someone else has done. But unfortunately, there's a lot of weak Christians in the faith at the Hillsong Church who may choose this path. So we need to pray for the Hillsong congregation that they'll be strengthened and that they'll be refined. And we also need to pray for the leadership of this church. You know, get it together. This celebrity whole pastor thing, you know, it's not important. It's 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 not going to do anything. It's just causing you guys problems. Just get into the war, get into the prayer. And this church, you know, we, God can turn this whole thing around and make Hillsong a powerhouse. Don't you ever think that that can't happen? God can do whatever He wants. But with the said right now, this is an unfortunate situation. Let's see how it turns up. Uh, you know, it just there's too much Hillsong nonsense going on, and I just hope that we don't hear about them for a long time in this kind of way. With that said, guys, you know, if you like what I'm doing here, subscribe, hit the like button. We're going to be trying to covering these Christian news and Christian topics and also just making some great Christian content. So with that said, guys, I will see you on the next video. Peace.